Good morning to those who are already joining us. Uh, you'll see that I've moved outside. I thought that I'd make the most of what proves to be the second of two relatively warm days, at least, during Holy Week. I think that uh, we're back to the cold again tomorrow. Uh, there are certain problems in doing this, of course. You've got to find a chair that's going to be the right size to match up with the camera stand. Um, you're going to have to see whether your signal's working uh, in making the transmission. And now I find that I'm also being buzzed by various insects. So if you find that um, I keep, me, keep making strange gestures, well, that's perhaps just so that I can actually look at the camera and not be too distracted or itchy or whatever. The great thing about being here is I don't have to turn the vicarage telephone off. Uh, you might hear it ring in the background. And also we can hear the sounds of nature around us. Hear the bird song. There's so much to be thankful for, isn't there, on this new day. And here now the bell of St Cuthbert's Church vying with a pheasant in the background as well and that tells us it's time to start so i'll do that after the chimes for nine o'clock end during holy week we use the words of the lamentations of jeremiah especially in morning prayer. And here is the introduction which we're given. It's from the first chapter and the third chapter of the Book of Lamentations. Of course, it's a lament for the city of Jerusalem, but it's a lament that we share as we follow Christ in his passion. Is it nothing to you, all you who pass by? Look and see if there is any sorrow like my sorrow which was brought upon me, which the Lord inflicted on the day of his fierce anger. For these things I weep, my eyes flow with tears, for a comforter is far from me, one to revive my courage. Remember my affliction and my bitterness, the wormwood and the gall. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that we should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. For the Lord will not reject forever. Though he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. Words of lament, but also followed by words of assurance that the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. As we read the account of our Lord's Passion, we know that it leads him to the cross, but at the same time, we know that it is through the cross that we find eternal life and hope in the resurrection. So this isn't a story simply to be depressed about. It, nevertheless, it's a story in which we may find ourselves. We may ask which of the characters in the story of the Passion we most associate with. Is it with one of the disciples, seemingly oblivious for most of the time leading up to the Last Supper, when finally it dawns upon them that Jesus is speaking of his leaving them? Is it with Christ himself in the isolation he increasingly finds, in the sense of abandonment? Or, worryingly, as today's Gospel reading tells us, is it with someone like Judas? who thinks he's doing the best thing, who's calculating, but whose way is one of disaster, at least for himself. 
I'm reminded that today, Wednesday in Holy Week, is also known as Spy Wednesday. It's Judas who's the spy, you might say, in the midst of the disciples as they make their preparations to celebrate the Passover. It's Judas who makes his preparations to betray Jesus. And of that we hear now in St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26, reading from verse 14. One of the twelve, the man called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you prepared to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty silver pieces, and from that moment he looked for an opportunity to betray him. Now on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus to say, Where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? Go to so-and-so in the city, he replied, and say to him, The master says, My time is near. It is at your house that I am keeping Passover with my disciples. The disciples did what Jesus told them and prepared the Passover. When evening came, he was at table with the twelve disciples, and while they were eating, he said, I tell you solemnly, one of you is about to betray me. They were greatly distressed and started asking him in turn, Not I, Lord, surely. He answered, Someone who has dipped his hand into the dish with me will betray me. The Son of Man is going to his fate, as the Scriptures say he will. But alas for that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Better for that man if he had never been born. Judas, who was to betray him, asked in his turn, Not I, Rabbi, surely. They are your own words, answered Jesus. Well, yesterday, in a reading from St. John's Gospel, we had a slightly different account of the Last Supper. But nevertheless, Judas going out to betray Jesus. We're not told of any preparations that he'd made in that particular account. Yet there's a similarity in what happens. Jesus, in St. John's account, says, it's the one to whom I shall give this piece of bread who will betray me. And he hands it to Judas. There's a knowledge there, isn't there? It's something else in St. Matthew's account. Someone who has dipped his hand into the dish with me will betray me. It could be any of the disciples, and they don't know who it is. We might look at ourselves and the actions we take from time to time. Occasionally we might ask, why did I do that? Or perhaps we're feeling wronged, and it's someone we've been close to. We're left with that same question. Why did they do that? What's going on? There are all sorts of attempts to give some sort of psychology to what Judas is doing. Does he think he's acting for the good? Is he out for himself? The whole problem of mixed motives that we find in daily life ourselves. And then, so often, that feeling that what we've done wrong just can't be put right. It leads Judas himself to despair. We're told that finally he goes out and hangs himself. What about ourselves in our daily actions? We need always to be looking to the love and mercy of God, which we see in Christ. Jesus doesn't do anything to stop Judas. There's no rebuking there, is there? Except on the one occasion when Judas takes Jesus to task for accepting the gift of anointing with expensive perfume. Couldn't this perfume instead have been sold so that the money could be given for the poor? We're told that in that, mind you, there was also a mixed motive. Judas out to lay hands on the money. Of course, the stories are told from the viewpoint of the individual tellers of the different 
evangelists. What we need to recognize as we approach the cross is the reason for it, the reason that Jesus doesn't shirk going to the cross for our sake, that he gives his life out of love for the world. And that's to bring us forgiveness. Hung on either side of him, there'll be two thieves, one mocking, the other recognizing something greater, which is the extent of divine love hanging on the cross. I remember last year, and I think it was about this time, I read a poem of John Donne, a Jacobean poet from the early 17th century, also a priest, but a man whose way of life himself had caused him to think much. One of his greatest poems, I think, is one entitled A Hymn to God the Father, which he wrote in the midst of a serious illness, perhaps at a time when he was most acutely aware of his need and of everything that had separated him from God and from others. It's a question of what God can do with our sin. The answer, finally, is to forgive it with love and mercy. Let me read that poem now for us all. Wilt thou forgive that sin where I begun, which is my sin, though it were done before? Wilt thou forgive those sins through which I run and do run still, though I still do deplore? When thou hast done, thou hast not done, for I have more. Wilt thou forgive that sin by which I have won others to sin and made my sin their door? Wilt thou forgive that sin which I did shun a year or two, but wallowed in a score? When thou hast done, thou hast not done, for I have more. I have a sin of fear that when I have spun my last thread, I shall perish on the shore. Swear by thyself that at my death thy sun shall shine as he shines now and theretofore. And having done that, thou hast done, I fear no more. Thou hast done, and this is John Donne, the poet and priest, playing on his own name. God has accomplished everything, and he's accomplished it for us, whom he knows by name. And with some prayers, and first a short litany of intercession, with a response, Lord have mercy on us. Let us pray earnestly to Christ our Saviour who redeemed us by his death and resurrection. Lord, have mercy on us. You went up to Jerusalem to endure the passion and enter into glory. Lead your church into the paschal feast of eternal life. Lord, have mercy on us. Your heart was pierced with a lance. Heal the wounds of our human weakness. Lord, have mercy on us. You made your cross the tree of life. Share your victory with all the baptized. Lord, have mercy on us. You gave salvation to the repentant thief. Pardon all our sins. Lord, have mercy on us. That prayer which Jesus gave to us, the Lord's Prayer, contains within it the petition that we should be forgiven our sins, our trespasses. So let's pray it together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross, grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I hope you'll have a good day today. Here I am sitting in the garden and I realise just how much there is that needs to be done within it. Um, I did purposely uh, focus the camera hoping that you could see behind me that there are at least some flowers, uh, a little bunch of daffodils there growing in the garden, in the borders. Uh, there are still further daffodils blooming elsewhere and some other flowers and I'm afraid I don't necessarily know all their, work, their names. Uh, just about all the things that grow in my garden I haven't planted myself uh, but sometimes I seem to be sharing in other people's good fortune. I don't think I'm going to have much time though for the garden. I'm going to be trying to work out what needs to be done in the days to come in church. I'm very much looking forward to being back in church with people in the coming days. I will be back hopefully at nine o'clock tomorrow morning to live stream. Uh, later on I'll be looking in on Durham Cathedral though again in their live stream. Uh, I'm not quite sure in fact if the live stream for that will come from Durham Cathedral or from Durham Diocese but somewhere on a Facebook page near us and at 11 o'clock there's the so-called Chrism Mass. That's the time when the bishop blesses the oils which are used in baptism in confirmation and ordination and in the healing of the sick. Uh, you might like to look in that on that yourself. Uh, not many people can be there in person this year. But then we do have an in-person service at seven o'clock in St John's Church in Castleside tomorrow evening. Uh, but do remember, uh, you do need to book in for that, as you do, I'm afraid, for all the services at this end of Holy Week and into Easter at St John's. Uh, St Cuthbert's will be back 10 o'clock on Good Friday morning. You can just turn up for that. We think we'll have plenty of space, even with social distancing. But on Easter Day, again, we ask that people tell us in advance if they would like to come on Easter morning. And that's so that we can get in as many people as we possibly can. Further details on our Facebook page and also on our blog, stcuthbert's.blogspot.com. That's the end of the adverts. I wish you a very good day and God bless you. <laughs>